good morning friends welcome back to your favorite channel code one digest today in this video we will learn what is dependency inversion principle just friend we'll understand the use cases of dependency inversion principle i'll show you the java code implementation of dependency inversion principle and also we'll discuss the benefits of dependency inversion principle just friend there's a lot to learn in this video a lot of learning and it is going to be very very exciting so stay tuned till end of this video i'm going to teach you what is dependency inversion principle friends in the previous video we discussed about interface segregation principle can you explain what is interface segregation principle and where to use it please reply your answer in the comment section of this video if you have not seen the previous video i would recommend you to go and see that video the link is provided on your screen and also given in the description section of this video just to recall the interface segregation principle interface segregation principle states that client should not be forced to consume interface that they don't want for more information please go and watch the previous video so friend here is the agenda for the video we will see the introduction of dependency inversion principle then i'll show you a real world example of dependency inversion principle i'll show you java code implementation of dependency inversion principle and we'll discuss the use cases of dependency inversion principle i will also explain the benefits of dependency inversion principle then at the end i'll summarize what is dependency inversion principle right friends so stay with me till end of this video it is going to be very very exciting and informative friends video. before we proceed in this video i want you to subscribe my channel to grow code one digest family friends i am creating a lot of quality contents for you but i am not getting subscribers i want you to like share and subscribe my channel so that i can grow code one digest family thank you Okay friends so let's start with dependency inversion principle so what is dependency inversion principle says dependency inversion principle is the fifth and the final principle of all solid principles that we have sir robert c martin definition of dependency inversion principle consists of a two parts that is high level module should not depend on the low level modules and both should depend on abstraction the second part is abstraction should not depend on details but the details should depend on the abstraction so here high level modules means we are talking about interface and our abstract classes and low level modules we are talking here as the implementation classes the abstraction means the interfaces or abstract class and details means again an implementation class so what we are trying to say our interface or abstract class should not depend on the implementation class but the implementation class should depend on the abstract class or interfaces an important message of this definition is that high level and low level module depends on abstraction this principle is split the dependency between the high level and low level module by introducing an abstraction layer between them so in the end you get two dependencies that is the high level module depends on abstraction and the low level module also depend on the same abstraction if you watch it closely dependency inversion principle is related to other solid principles that is if you constantly apply the open close principle and the lisco substitution principle to your code it will automatically be following the dependency inversion principle the open close principle require a software component to be open for extension but close for modification you can achieve that by introducing a interface for which you can provide different implementations an interface itself is a closed for modification and you can easily extend it by providing a new implementation to that interface your implementation should follow the lisco substitution principle so that you can replace them with the other implementation of the same interface without breaking your application 
So, in simple terms, dependency inversion principle introduces an interface abstraction between your high level module and low level module. That is to reduce or remove the dependencies between them. The aim of this principle is to reduce the coupling between the classes by introducing an abstraction layer. Now let's understand dependency inversion principle with an example. Let's say you are a manager and you are managing developers, graphic designers and testers. Now let's look at the design loopholes on the left hand side. First you have exposed everything about the lower layer to the upper layer. Thus abstraction is not considered here. That means the manager must know in advance about the type of worker that he can supervise. Now, if another type of worker comes under the manager, let's say QA, then the whole class need to go under change. This is where the dependency inversion principle comes into play. Let's solve this problem of manager by using a dependency inversion principle. The solution is on your right hand side. The solution is to introduce an abstraction layer between the manager and an employees. The creation of abstraction between different types of employees and manager have resulted a very good design. And now if any other kind of employee is added, it can be simply be added to manager without making any changes to the manager and manager need not explicitly know about it. So finally, we introduce a new class that is employees as an abstraction between manager and types of employees. In new design, the manager doesn't have an idea beforehand about all the types of worker that may come under him or her. This is making the code truly loosely coupled. There are many design patterns where this is a core idea and other things are built on top of it. Friends, now let me show you another example of dependency inversion principle. I have prepared a Java code implementation of dependency inversion principle and I have shared this project in the GitHub repository. You can download the code from GitHub repository and play with it. The link of GitHub repository is given on your screen and also provided in the description section of this video. So go and download the code and play with it. Let me give you a code walkthrough for dependency inversion principle. I have written the code in Java and I'm using Java 8 with IntelliJ IDE. I'm going to explain dependency inversion principle using an example of calculator app. So let's see that now. Okay friends, so now I have a solid principle project and in that I have packaged dependency inversion principle. I have all the clauses for this principle. Now if we see our calculator class and in this class we have defined addition and subtraction as a two operations, right? So now tomorrow if you want to add more operations then we will have to modify this calculator class and this calculator class will go under changes. This calculator class should know in advance what all operations it is going to support in advance. So in future, if a new operations comes, then this class needs to go under change. Hence, we don't have any abstraction layer in between. So the solution to this problem is to segregate the calculator and the operation types. So what we are going to do here is we are going to remove this code from here and we are going to introduce a new interface that is calculator operation. This interface is a new interface. This is an abstraction layer that we are introducing between the calculator and the different type of operations it can perform. So this interface is having a method perform operations, right? And I have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, all these are implementation of this interface. 
so if you see addition is doing addition of two numbers subtraction is subtracting the two numbers and so on but now the change what we have to do in our calculator class is to inject calculator operation class by this method once we pass the calculator operation in this method it performs the operation and get you the result now in future you can independently add as many operations by implementing the calculator operation interface and you can pass that operation easily to the calculator class as a method parameter and perform that operation so any new operation that we are adding in future has no impact on this calculator class right let's see our calculator test what it looks like so in this calculator test class we are taking two numbers as an input 10 and 5 and then we have defined an instance of calculator class and now these are all different objects of calculator operations like addition operation subtraction operation multiplication operation and division operation using this operation object we are passing that operation object to a calculator method okay and get that operation done so let me run this and see this what happens so if you see here we are calling addition then we are calling subtraction multiplication and division and so on in addition we got a result 15 then for subtraction we got 5 for multiplication we got 50 and for division we got 2 so in the same way in future we can add as many new operations we want by extending this interface and it is not going to impact our calculator class so what we have done by creating this interface is we have introduced an abstraction layer between the calculator class and the operation types it can perform this is a very basic idea of dependency inversion principle where my high level classes and low level classes should not depend on each other they should depend on abstraction and abstraction should not depend on detail but detail should depend on abstraction and we have done exactly the same thing by having this interface in between as an abstraction layer okay friends so very first question comes to our mind where and how to use dependency inversion principle in our project so you can use dependency inversion whenever you want high level classes should not depend on low level classes you can use dependency inversion principle whenever you want high level classes and low level classes should depend on abstraction use dependency inversion principle whenever your abstraction that is interface or abstract class should not depend on the detail class that is the implementation class use dependency inversion principle whenever you want to achieve the loose coupling between the classes so what are the benefits we get out of this dependency inversion principle dependency inversion principle ensures the loose coupling between the software components dependency inversion principle makes sure high level module not depending on the low level module dependency inversion principle makes sure the abstraction should not depend on the detail but the detail depends on abstraction okay friends so now let me summarize what we learned in this video today we understood what is dependency inversion principle we saw a real world example of dependency inversion principle we also saw a java code implementation of dependency inversion principle and we understood the use cases of dependency inversion principle at the end we also discussed the benefits of dependency inversion principle so friends let me know if you have already used the dependency inversion principle in your project or seen a scenario where this principle can be very useful please provide your answer in the comment section of this video friends if you like this video so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues.
This is very useful information for students, beginners, and software engineers. I am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents. So please help me growing the Code One Digest family. Please subscribe to Code One Digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos. Thank you. Thank you.